Hi, my name is Dr. Lily and this is my pocket pediatrician. I am a medical doctor. I have an MD and an MPH and I started this channel a couple of years ago and it's kind of taken a left turn in the last month or so and I've started researching, exploring, and making a lot of homemade personal protective equipment. So if you're watching this, it's probably because somebody made you a mask like this or this and they want you to understand a little bit better how to use it safely. So if you're a healthcare worker like me, you might be a little bit distrustful of homemade personal protective equipment. I am too. We've all had very well-meaning families and patients bring us in things like homemade cookies and later found out they had breast milk in them or something like that happened. So understandably, we're a little bit suspicious when somebody brings us a mask and tells us it's gonna filter. These are two prototypes that I made. I made this one first and then wound up making some design improvements and started making this one. Both of these masks passed a fit test on me and so I don't know which one you might get but so this one is actually a six by nine shape that with the elastic it kind of bunches down into this sort of little purse shape and it has a little filter pocket inside where you can put the filter inside and this one is a little bit rounder but the same idea with the filter shape this one does have adjustable toggles so you can adjust the fit to be more comfortable for yourself I honestly like this one better because it's a little bit more contoured to my face. It feels a little better and I like the fact that it's adjustable since we all do have slightly different shaped faces. In this time there are a lot of shortages. People are having a really hard time finding elastic. Our materials are all in a low supply. The nice thing about both of these masks is they're washable. They have a reusable filter pocket so you can put a new filter in every single day and then you can go to work with the hope that you're wearing something that's going to actually protect you slightly more from COVID particles than some of the other homemade options that are out there. So I did pass the fit test with both of these masks and I used two different filter materials as well. I have Filthy which was designed for the DIY face masks. And I also have, you might have been given some 3M air filters that have been cut up. Now there are people using all kinds of filter material at home. People are using coffee filters. They're using Wonder Under, they're taking quilting batting, they're putting flannel sheets in there. If you're using a filter media that was not designed to filter viral particles, it's not gonna work. Coffee filters are designed to filter coffee grounds. They don't catch viral particles. They don't even catch droplets because obviously water can pour right through them. So you need a filter material that was designed to catch viral particles. Some people are using the OR blue wrap sheets and cutting those up and they were passing N95 fit tests. I went to order some of that and their website said they don't recommend using it for face masks. I haven't been able to fit test it, so I don't know if that's gonna work or not, but anything that you use, you must cut your filter exactly to the correct size for your mask and make sure that it's fully filling your mask with no gaps anywhere inside. There are a lot of people out there making a lot of homemade gear and really well-intentioned and doing their best and trying to make something for you that's gonna help protect you in this COVID pandemic. But unfortunately, not all homemade PPE gear is made equally. A lot of people are making homemade masks that mimic surgical masks. If you're looking for a filtering mask, this is definitely not it. It's fine if you're gonna wear it, wear it perhaps over your N95. If you have a real N95, it might prolong the wear of that a little bit. But this does not filter and it may be similar to the CDC bandana or scarf idea where basically it will contain your droplets for yourself. But if you're seeing a patient with a fabric mask on and their droplets get in your mask, this is gonna kinda act like a sponge and soak all their droplets into your respiratory tract. That's really not what you're looking for. Any Anybody wearing a fabric mask of any type absolutely must have a face shield over the mask, whatever type it is. These are face shields. I made a quick tutorial out of just how to do them out of shower curtain or out of clear vinyl. Quick and easy design and they're pretty comfortable, but whatever type of face shield you have, you might have one from a 3D printer or you might have real commercially available face shields, but whatever you do, if you're wearing a fabric mask, you must have a face shield over it to stop the patient's droplets from getting onto your mask. Of course, if you're seeing a patient with close contact, you also want goggles and anything you can do to stop any of their particles from getting into any of your mucous membranes. So to make a better mask, a lot of people started making what they're calling pocket masks, which is a mask that's kind of like a little purse and you have a pocket. You can put a filter into that pocket. If you go on YouTube, there's a lot of variations of this type of mask, but the problem with this type of mask is that we all know that air looks for the path of least resistance. So if you have a filter in here and there's not a tight seal, which there's not, air can get in any of these cracks or areas all around here, especially around here. So what's gonna happen is when I breathe in, air is gonna come and it's harder to work to get through the filter. So it's gonna find the path of least resistance. It's gonna go around my mask and come in through all these gaps and cracks and places where there is no seal. 
And so basically what I'm doing when I put that filter in a, in a mask without a tight seal is I'm just telling the air to go around, bypass the filter, and I'm basically breathing unfiltered air. There are millions of people making these masks and unfortunately, I don't know how much good they're gonna do. So we all know that when we have a real N95, we have to get fit tested every year. We have to make sure there's absolutely a tight seal on the face. It's got two strands of elastic that go around. There's some foam on the inside, and we have to get fit tested to know that there is a tight seal to our face because if we're using a filter and we don't have a tight seal, we might as well be using something like this or something like this where there's absolutely no seal because air, as we know, will find the path of least resistance. So I started making this mask, which is a pocket mask that has elastic on all four sides on the inside, you can't see it, and then two bands that go around the head similar to an N95. There is a foam and metal nose piece inside that also helps with the seal. And as you can see, there's a tight seal on all four sides. When I'm wearing this mask, if I blow up, no air goes to my eyes. And the pocket inside this mask is a rectangle. So the other issue with the pocket masks is what are you using as your filter material? What I started by doing was taking 3M air filters, which are designed to filter viral particles, so they must be 1500 or higher. So these are 2200. And I started dismantling the filters, cutting them up, making them into rectangles that were the exact same shape as the mask. I know it doesn't look like it because the elastic kind of makes it all scrunched down, but this is actually the size and shape of my mask. And if you put two filters inside and you should have them labeled, it should say HCW for healthcare worker on them. That side is the side that points towards you. You can put two filters inside the mask. And when you do this, you do it like you're stuffing a duvet. So you put your filter in, kind of pinch as you go. Make sure that every corner a face mask has filter inside of it. And I was able to pass a fit test with this mask and with the two layers of filter material inside. So now that I've got it exactly shaped to my mask, I can put it on. I wanna pinch my nose piece down to my face. And when you put it on, the nose piece goes on the outside and that sort of holds the inside of the pocket to your face as well. So now that I have this on, I can breathe, I move my head, I can see. There are no gaps anywhere, and I have filter material everywhere in my face. So if you wanna wear a mask like this, I was able to pass a fit test using this mask. I 100% would recommend that you do a fit test before you wear this mask in a clinical setting. Obviously, my face could be a different shape and size than yours, and you wanna make sure that you don't have any gaps and that this would actually be a filtering mask for you if you needed to wear something like this. So since I made my first tutorial, 3M came out with a statement and said they don't recommend using the HVAC filters as face masks, which obviously that's not what they were designed for. A lot of people have said there's fiberglass in them. There is not fiberglass in them. They're made out of polyprene and they have an electrostatic charge inside them that is also what helps catch the viral particles. Anytime we're using something outside the purpose for which it was designed, there's always risk. So. If you're gonna wear this mask, you're definitely wearing it at your own risk, and I also would recommend 100% fit testing. When you are done with this mask, it's washable. It's made out of 100% cotton, and there's elastic inside, and the nose piece has some foam and some metal. This is my nose piece, and I just wanna show it to you. So basically, it's ribbon, there is some weather rubber stripping foam, and there's a piece of metal inside. It's been sewn into your mask, and that's what gives it its shape, and it also helps with the seal on your nose. When you remove your mask, you want to carefully discard your filter material. This I would throw directly in the garbage and then wash your hands. Assume it is soaked full of COVID particles when you're done with your day. And then this you can throw in the washing machine. And then the next day, hopefully somebody gave you a bag full of filters and you should be able to take out two new ones and put them in the mask and start your day again. This can go in the washer and dryer. The nose pieces are holding up well as I've been washing and drying them. And if you're working every day, I would probably recommend having two sets of masks so that you could wash one and have another clean one ready to go the next day. Again, when you're putting it in, make sure you have that filter stuffed in every possible corner of the mask because if there's any gaps or any area where the filter's bunched up and you just have fabric, the air is gonna go right through that area and you would fail a fit test. After making that mask, one of my dear friends who's an infectious disease doctor called me and told me she's a small size and that she was not able to get any N95s that actually fit her face. So I took my model and I started 
playing around with it. One thing I wanted to do was make it two different colors. So you might be getting a mask that's two different colors, just so you know a little more easily which side goes to your face and which side doesn't. If you don't have two colors, just look for the nose piece and put the nose piece on the outside. Uh, I also wanted to make it a little more rounded and a little more adjustable, so I actually put toggles on here so we can adjust the fit. So if you're interested, the actual shape of this mask is this, and then with the elastic, it kind of scrunches down into this shape. And with this mask, I found out about a new filter material called Filty, which was designed to be used for DIY face masks. This material kind of looks like a paper towel. It's very thin, but it's got three layers to it. There's a polypreme layer on the outside, which is kind of the shiny layer. There's a nanofiber layer that you cannot see. And then on the inside, there's this sort of fuzzy layer, which is kind of the dust catcher area. Now on the filthy mask, when you put that in, the healthcare worker side is actually the shiny side. On the three on one, the healthcare worker side is kind of the fuzzy side, but it works better this way. Now when you put this filter in your mask, you wanna make sure again, you're stuffing it just like a duvet. And so what I do is I grab the corner here on the bottom and I go find my bottom corner here, which is kind of easy because that's where the bottom piece of elastic is. I then go to the top side, get my other bottom side down here. And then on the inside, see it, I just want it to bunch up a little bit. So I just take it and kind of smooth and flatten it all the way through so that there's no area a fabric that does not have filter material in there. When I did my fit testing, I did test seven masks on myself and one of them failed and I couldn't figure out why. And when I got home, I looked at it and I had my filter bunched up on one side. So there was an area where there was just cotton and that obviously failed the fit test. So every day when you stuff your new material into your mask, you have to make sure you do it correctly or else you're gonna wind up failing a fit test or failing yourself and getting COVID. So when I put this one on, push my nose piece down and then what I can do is take the toggles I put a little bead on these or some there might be something else but kind of cinch it down to the point where it feels comfortably stretched across my face so blow up I don't feel anything in my eyes that's very tight very tight here I know I stuff my filter inappropriately and I should have a good seal all the way around Again, when I take them off, you can either just stretch them or you can adjust your toggles as you like. And then at the end of the day, I want to carefully remove my filter material. With the 3M filter, if you're using a 3M, and you can cut the 3M filter to this size as well, I have a template for that, or you can use the Filty. The Filty works out to be a little bit cheaper. It's about 50 cents per insert per day, but because you need two layers of the 3M material, that works out closer to about a dollar a day per mask. This material can go in the autoclave. The company Filty, which is filty.com, where you can order replacement filters if you need it, they were able to autoclave it multiple times and then run it through a TSI particle counter and found out that it retained its efficacy throughout the whole time. One day I was making these and I threw a mask in the washer and dryer without removing the filter material by accident. And I sent that to them in their lab in Oklahoma and they were able to test it and they realized that running it through the washer and dryer reduced the efficacy by about 60%. So this material definitely should not get wet, should not be washed or dried, but you can put it in an autoclave. We're thinking about maybe baking it in the oven to see if you could reuse it. But honestly, for 50 cents a day, I'd be feel more comfortable just replacing it with a new one every single day. But we're living in resource limited times, so if you are unable to replace your filter every day, I would consider an autoclave or possibly baking it in the oven. I am gonna do some experimenting with baking them and sending it back to them and seeing how it performs after that. This mask, just like this one, uh, can go in the washer and dryer, no problem. They've been surviving well. Uh, I did put a craft bead on here just so your toggle doesn't slip off if you have a one-hole toggle. Some people might be able to find two-hole toggles, in which case you don't have to worry about that. But these have been surviving on my dryer at regular heat and having no trouble. Again, I can only tell you that these passed a fit test on me. I fully recommend getting fit tested before you wear either of these masks in a clinical setting. You absolutely are gonna be wearing these masks at your own risk. Even if I personally made this mask for you, I cannot vouch that it's gonna work for you. And I've put these tutorials online. I've given my patterns to hundreds and hundreds of people. I have no idea if they're gonna do the same quality of workmanship that I did. Some of them might be better, some of them might be worse, but I have no way of quality controlling what people are doing. 
somebody could have decided that the nose piece wasn't a necessary part of it and left that out. It definitely is. It helps with your seal and it helps with your fit and your comfort. Somebody may not have been able to find elastic and I've seen people using t-shirt ties and things like that that really don't work and there's no way it's going to pass a fit test. I did some experimenting with different types of elastic and the skinny elastic just didn't hold well at all and I could not get a fit test passed with that. So if you're going to wear this in a clinical setting, please get fit tested with your filter material that you're going to be using. If you need more filter material, you can go to filthy.com and I do have a discount code. It's called MPP mask. That's for my pocket pediatrician mask and that will give you 10% off your order. So if you were given one of these masks and only enough filter material for let's say a week or so, you probably wanna go ahead and order it because they are in high demand. And the person who made the mask for you might have sent you this template as well. This is what you would use to cut out your filter material. It's slightly smaller than the mask just because there are sleeve allowances in the mask that take up a little bit of room and I wanted it to fit but you can just print this off as a PDF and you can use that to cut and trace your filter material. Um, so you might get a little bag of filter material, but you might run out. And if you do, just go to filthy.com and you can order more of that material. Like I said, 10% off if you use the code MPP mask. Also, if somebody made this mask for you and then you get a shipment of real N95s, always wear your real N95. Anything that's commercially made is gonna be better than something that was made in somebody's house or kitchen or wherever. If you get a homemade mask from somebody, always wash it first. Just assume they have COVID and you don't wanna be putting something that's been prepared in someone's home right up on your face immediately. So the first thing you need to do is wash this mask. I told people when they're preparing the filter material to wear gloves and a mask so that they're not breathing their droplets onto this. I have no way of knowing if they're actually doing that or not. So hopefully everybody is not breathing directly into your filter material either. If you feel more comfortable preparing your own filter material, you can order it directly from filthy.com. And if you get a real mask, take it every time. You can take a selfie of yourself in this mask and send it to whoever made it for you and tell them you appreciate it. But DIY homemade stuff is never a replacement for commercially available PPE. Honestly, this is really just a last ditch effort. If you have nothing else available, I would go with this. If you have any shot at using real PPE, go with that every single time. Now, these masks are a lot of work. Every mask that I make takes me about 40 minutes or so of my time to put into it. These supplies are hard to come by. Elastic is in shortage. It took me weeks to get new elastic once our local stores ran out. And every order I did online was getting canceled and things like that. So if somebody made you a mask, that means they really love you and they are looking out for you. They put a lot of time and a lot of effort into this. And you definitely want to appreciate that from them. I would not throw these out. If you do get a big shipment of regular N95s, just hang on to this in case you run out and need it at some point in the end because these are not the five minute masks that people are so excited about making on YouTube. These are really a structurally complex mask. As you can see, there are layers inside. You've got elastic on the inside and somebody put a lot of time into making this for you. Keep it on the back burner in case you do need it at some point in the future. Oh, and one more thing. If you have asthma or COPD or some other medical condition where you might not want to wear a filtering mask, you should definitely talk to your doctor before you wear one of these because you can rebreathe some of your own air in this. Now, as a healthcare worker, you would be wearing these in a clinical setting around other people. I have said I don't recommend wearing these around the house. These are not a replacement for social distancing. These are only to be worn when you are in a clinical setting around other people or in close contact with other people. But if you're concerned at all about what effect this might have on your breathing, I would definitely talk to your own physician first. So thank you so much for what you're doing. I hope this explained this mask a little bit better and the person who made it for you. I have a YouTube channel called My Pocket Pediatrician, so if you wanna go there and subscribe, you'll get notified if there are any updates to this mask or the wear or use of it. Uh, I will let you know what happens when I bake it in the oven. I'll make a video about that and we'll check it out with the TSI particle counter. Thank you for what you're doing to take care of all our patients. Thank you for being out there, working so hard, putting your life at risk. We really appreciate it. I really just hope you can stay safe in these times and thank you so much. This is Dr. Lily with my pocket pediatrician. Thanks for stopping by. When the doctor says my child has a condition, I'll learn more at my pocket pediatrician.